These are pixels which makes up an image and today we are going to play with them. We'll be taking up this image and turn it into something like this. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Hey guys, it's me DD again. Welcome back to the Explorian. And for those who are new to this channel, this channel is all about designing in Photoshop and sharing the process with you. And along with that, we explore different tools, techniques and tips and tricks which will improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. Today we are going to create an effect which is called pixel sorting. And why is it called so? Because we'll be playing with the pixels in the image and apply a filter to create this unique effect. This may sound complicated but believe me, this is very easy to create. We just have to follow some important steps in a sequential manner and that's all. Here are the steps along with their timestamps but I would recommend you to watch the full video with little patience for better understanding. So let's quickly jump onto the screen and start working on it. By now you already know my usual canvas size, it's A4 size. You are free to choose any canvas size you want depending on the image you will be working with. And now we bring in our image and drop it onto the canvas. Why have I chosen this image? There are no particular reasons. I just felt like it was going well with the theme of today's poster. So go on and choose your image. There are many stock image websites. My favorites are Pexels and Onesplash.com. I got this image from Pexels.com and if you happen to like this image, I'll be providing the download link in the description. I'll rename this layer as subject as this is gonna be our main subject and make two more duplicate copies of the same by pressing Ctrl or Command J twice. We'll be working with the topmost layer so we'll turn off the visibility of the other two layers and we're gonna do it in just one go. How? Just hold the Alt or Option key and click on the eye icon of this layer and it's done. We have to isolate our subject and remove the background and for that I'm going to use the quick selection tool and then click on the select subject and then refine the selection further. You can use any selection tool you are comfortable with. And if you want to learn more about the different selection tools we have in Photoshop you can have a look at one of my playlists in which there are detailed videos of all the selection tools and explanation on how and in which scenarios we can use those selection tools. You can find the playlist by clicking on the i button above and the link of the same will be given in the description as well. I'll be skipping the background removal process and after all the work, this is the result I have achieved. Actually, I realized that we no longer need two copies of the subject layer, so we will delete one of them and now we'll start creating the effect. For that, we go to File and create a new canvas and there's a reason for that, which I'll be explaining in a moment. We'll go to our original canvas and grab the subject layer and drag it onto the new canvas, position it at the center and then go to Image menu and click on Image Size. Here, let's understand the concept first. At the starting itself, I have said that we will be dealing with the individual pixels. And if, just pay attention here, if our image is bigger in dimension, that implies that the number of pixels will be more. And without changing anything, if we apply the effect, the lines in the end results will be more and they will be thinner. If you want it that way, you can definitely go ahead. But I have noticed that it looks better if the lines are a little bit thicker. And to achieve that, we have to reduce the number of pixels. And that is exactly what we are trying to do here. Here you can see the dimensions of the image is quite big. And in my experience, I have noticed that the results are best when the image is in the range of 1000 to 2000 pixels. So what I'll do is change the height value, which is the bigger side to 2000 pixels and let the width change on its own and hit OK. And now you can see our image and the canvas size is reduced. And that's the reason why we have done this process on a separate new canvas. Otherwise, it would have affected the main canvas size. Then we have to rotate the image. Why? You can also discover that in a moment. For rotating, keep the layer selected. We go again to image, then image rotation and then click on 90 degrees clockwise. Now it's the time for the star of today's show. We go to filter then stylize and click on wind. Here we have three style options here, wind, blast and stagger. Click on them and see the styles for yourself. I'll be using the latter two styles today. Let's select the blast option first and then we have directions here. And now you see we have only two options here, from right and from left, because wind flows like that. And since wind doesn't flow vertically, we rotate our image. Depending on your preference, you can choose either of the two. I'll be selecting from left and hit OK. And now we have to reapply this filter few more times. And for that, go to the filter again and click here on wind. Or you can use the shortcut for the last used filter, which is given here. In my case, it's Ctrl plus Command plus F and I will press it multiple times. 
this much will be fine again apply the wind filter and this time choose the staggered option and again apply it multiple times I'll stop here and now press the controller command E to merge the layer and then go to image again then image rotation and this time click on 90 degrees counterclockwise now we'll grab this layer and drag it to our original canvas and drop it we'll resize and position it to align it properly with the subject layer we'll reduce its opacity temporarily and I'll be using the trick I have already shown in my last video make sure the move tool is active and the layer is selected we can use the number keys on the keyboard to set the opacity like I want the opacity to be 50% so I will press 5 likewise 7 for 70% 8 for 80 and 9 for 90 I'll be aligning it like this and now hit 0 to set the opacity to 100% I'll rename the layer as pixel sort and now for this canvas either you can save it if you want or close it without saving because we no longer need it we then add a layer mask to the pixel sort layer and in the next step we'll be doing the masking and if you have made this far in this video i can assume that you are finding this interesting and if so i'd really appreciate if you can give it a thumbs up and if you are interested in more such contents then please subscribe to the channel we'll grab the brush tool make the brush size bigger by pressing the right square bracket key right click to open the brush settings and select the soft round brush and with the black as our foreground color we'll start painting why black? Because black conceals. Always remember this while masking black conceals and white reveals. I will mask out all the extra areas first. Another trick, hold the shift key and then when you move the brush, the brush will move in a straight line and it will be both vertically and horizontally. I don't want these green areas. Go back to the move tool and I will reposition it a little. I will also stretch it vertically a little bit. Take the brush tool again and continue the masking process. Press the hex key to change the foreground color to white and paint to reveal where it's needed. We can even alter the flow of the brush. This much is fine. Now we'll select both these layers by holding the shift key and convert it into a smart object so that it's non-destructive and we can make changes later on. We can also add a layer mask to this smart object and mask out the unwanted areas. I'll double click on the icon of the smart object layer we just created and you will notice a separate canvas will open with all our original layers we were working with and now we can make whatever changes we like to these layers. I'll bring back some of the pixel sorts in this area. And after we are done, we have to press the controller command S to save and then close this canvas. And our main canvas will be automatically updated with the changes. But since we have a separate mask here, so it's not visible right now, we have to bring it back. There are still some parts which need to be masked out. I'll move it a bit upward and now we will add a solid color adjustment layer and change its color to somewhat white with a little bit of yellow tint. Drag it to the bottom and it will be our background. Few refinements are needed in some areas. Now we'll double click here on the blank space of this layer to open the layer style dialog box and click here to add a drop shadow. Don't worry we have to just adjust the size and spread and everything will be fine. Play with the sliders and see what suits you best and when you are done hit ok. I forgot to rename this layer. Let's call it subject composite. And now we are going to add some text and other elements to our post. Let's turn up the visibility of the subject composite layer for the time being and work with the original image layer. I want to use the background in this image but in the form of a shape. So what we'll do here is take the ellipse tool then go here and change it into path and then draw an ellipse by holding the shift key so that it becomes a circle. 
I'll resize it a little bit and then right click inside the circle and click on make selection. Then we'll add a layer mask to this subject layer and now it's a disk with the same golden background. We'll turn back on the visibility of the subject composite layer and now position it as we like. I will place it here. Let's adjust the size a little bit. I'll rename this layer as disk. Now we'll be adding some text and for that we will take the text tool and click anywhere on the canvas to add and type in our text. I'm using a font called Blanca. I don't really remember where did I get it from but I will try to provide the download link in the description. I will make some copies of this text and for that I will hold the Alt or Option key and just click and drag to make a copy and then double click to edit it. I will add another line of text here and for this I will be using the font Carson. We are gonna select all the text layers and press Ctrl or Command G to group them together and rename the group as text. I will be adding a border to the poster and for that we will take the rectangle tool, again change it to shape and in the fill we will select none and keep the stroke as it is and then change the size of the stroke. Draw the border like this and let me share a trick here. At this point if you want to change the position of the shape we are drawing, normally what we have to do is go to the move tool and then drag it to position it. But we can do the same without doing all this. All we have to do is hold the spacebar and now when we drag we can change the position of the rectangle and when we have decided on the position leave the spacebar and continue drawing the rectangle. I want the border to be golden and for that we need a gradient. We can do that by going again to the layer styles of the layer and click on gradient overlay. My gradient is already set. And if you want to learn more on how to use the gradient editor and adjust it as per your liking, you can watch my last video where I have discussed it thoroughly. Here is a link for that video and you can find that in the description also. I'll reposition the text group a little and add a layer mask to the rectangle layer and again take the brush tool, change it to hard round brush and with black as foreground color we'll paint like this. I will add a ring here and for that we will again take the ellipse tool and it will be just above the subject composite layer. We'll draw a circle just as we did earlier. It will be a shape, fill will be none and we have only the stroke. I want the same golden gradient just like we have on the border and to apply that we will do a trick here. We'll hold the Alt or Option key and click and drag this effect on the rectangle layer and drop it onto the ellipse layer and boom, it's done. Finally, we'll add a layer mask to the ellipse layer as well and do some masking. I will also be adding some shadows to the disk and the ellipse layer and do some final refinements. And our poster for today is complete. Did you like the poster? Please leave your comments down below. I really enjoyed the whole process of creating it and I know you will feel the same while creating your one. So all the best for that and I'll be back soon with a new poster. Till then if you want to learn creating the amazing paper cutout effect, you can watch this video.